Howdy! Welcome to my channel. Today we will be doing a bit of die cutting along with sewing using embroidery thread and I'll turn that into a card. So first let's die cut our card front so that it's a bit smaller than our card base. If you're wondering where these die cuts come from, these are Spellbinders, and they are the A2 Matting Basics, which come in a size A and a size B. I like to keep them together because I never know which size I'm gonna wanna use, but both of these are good for if you are creating a A2 size card. They also have this for a couple of other sizes of card base, but I don't usually make cards that are too much bigger than an A2 size card, so this is pretty much all I need. So we've already pre-scored our card base. Now we just need to die cut our card front. So that means we're bringing out our washi tape. I like to use washi tape when I do my die cutting. Otherwise, if I don't have washi tape, on hand, I like to use post-it notes. If you've watched my die cutting videos before, you'll know that this is a bit different than the machine I usually use. This is my We Are Memory Keepers Evolution. And I normally use this machine when I travel as opposed to when I work at home and that's because this die cutting machine can easily fold up whereas my Sizzix Big Shot can't do that. So we've got our card front now. Now all we need to do is die cut our sentiment into the front of the panel. We're going to die cut this three times in order to use these three colors of embroidery thread. If you don't have a die cut like this one, you could always hand write a sentiment that's very scrawly like this and then bring out your pokey tool to help you create the holes that you will be running the thread through. So we are going to start from the top and work our way down as far as how we're going to place our die cut. And we are going to use our T-square to help us figure out where that's going to be placed. We're just going to place this washi tape back on here to make sure that our sentiment die doesn't shift while we're doing our die cutting. Now we just need to die cut it one final time. So now that we're done with our die cutting, we can bring in the embroidery floss and our needle. When I'm not using this needle, I like to keep the needle in the beaker with the lid on now, if you didn't want to sew, you totally wouldn't have to, but I think it makes it a lot easier to read the die cut sentiment if you do. Now we just have to grab some of our thread. It's going to take a lot of thread to get through this sentiment. But one of the reasons I picked sewing for today is that not everybody may have all of the same materials to create a card from scratch, but 
Some people may be sewers and then they're like, oh, that's really cool, you could make a card. And then trying to figure out how to do that. Or some people may be card makers and looking for a way to learn how to sew. For me, I've kind of always known how to sew. I kind of had to learn early in life. My mom, you know what? This is clearly not working with this thread, so we are going to clip it. Sometimes you just need to. Um, but the reason I sew is because, well, in my mom's home country, she actually, my mom learned a trade, which was to be a seamstress. Um, when she got to America, she used that for crocheting to help kind of keep her skill set sharp. But by the time I was growing up, she wasn't really doing that. But she was willing to teach me at least how to sew buttons and things like that. And also, when I was younger, I used to like to take like material like socks and <laughs> make my Barbie dolls clothes. When I got older, a lady at church was actually teaching us how to do Well, she was teaching us how to make lace, actually. Um, and I know people are, some but people might be like, you can do that? And it's like, yeah, that's something I learned how to do as a girl, was learned how to make lace. One of my hobbies when I was younger was actually to needlepoint. And when I got to college, my major was fashion, merchandising specifically, and as part of my major, we had to take a textile class. But it wasn't just a class on learning about specific textiles. It was also a class where we had to learn how to make a textile. Our, my teacher taught us how to knit for our textiles class. I'm not sure what other people learned in their schools, but that's what I learned in mine. So working with cloth and sewing and needle pointing and all of that, basically this is kind of my, this is kind of my roots to do this card is to sort of incorporate those roots back into creating this card. So it's not easy to thread a needle. It never is, I don't think, but this is why I picked, I thought I picked a good needle. I may have to change my needle. I do have a couple of other ones in here. Let's change the needle, because this needle is not cooperating really. So, um, yeah, I have always known how to use my hands when it came to sewing. In fact, my mother altered my wedding dress because, well, I'm five foot tall. <laughs> and they don't make dresses for girls that are that short as far as wedding dresses go. So my mom actually had to alter my wedding dress just so that, well, it would, I could actually walk in it and wear it. <laughs> so as you can see, we kind of put a hole in the wrong spot on our paper, which is not good, but we can fix that. We can deceptively fix that, that that's what I'm going to say, because I'm not going to restart, because it took us a while. So what you do, so number one, we want to make sure we have plenty, and I mean plenty, of thread. Then we want to take our thread and pull it through and we're going to snip it here we're bringing our washi tape back in because we are not going to tie a knot since we already have to be a little deceptive because we kind of tore that piece of paper right there we're going to need to use some washi tape anyways so we might as well start using it now 
So what we do is we just sew our piece. Then you just, I would just put some more washi tape down. This is gonna kinda help us build strength back up into the, that little section that got ripped. So now we're going to bring our needle back through and then we're going to put it back through that first hole because that's kind of how I would sew this anyways if we hadn't created that tear but we did so the next thing we're going to do is grab a bit more washi tape washi tape is just gonna help us make sure that our thread does not at least in this section that we kind of ripped our thread doesn't mess us up and so you could do it one more time if you wanted to with the washi tape but I think we're probably okay at this point because we've got a lot more spaces to sew. Now, I'm not gonna ask you to watch me sew the whole piece, but I did wanna show you what happens in case you do make a little boo-boo in your sewing. It happens to everybody. I would say that sewing on cardstock is a bit different from sewing on cloth, but it's still kind of relaxing. Also, if you don't have embroidery floss, what you could use instead is baker's twine. Or you could take just some regular thread and you could always, much like you can take your cardstock and your ink pad and create the look of your cardstock being that color, you can do the same thing with thread if you have white thread. We are just trying to make sure that we are in the right section. There you go because we did punch a hole and we did stick our washi tape behind it. We just wanna be sure that we don't make any more holes, basically. So I have a question for y'all. Do you do any other crafts besides card making? Um, I have a friend who loves to make quilts. Yeah, I can't make a quilt, but I sure can make a quilt looking card, <laughs> but I do love quilts. Oh my gosh, they're awesome. We have several quilts in our home, um, mostly because I just like the look of it versus just a comforter from the store. Some of our quilts are actually, well, one of our quilts, my husband's grandmother actually sewed for him when he was a kid. So that one's kind of special. Now it's, it's not necessarily the prettiest, but it's really sweet. And it's actually the quilt that we use the most in the winter time. So grandma sure did know how to make a nice warm quilt. Now, when I got older, Okay, so my mom didn't teach me how to use a sewing machine. Actually, my mother-in-law taught me how to use a sewing machine. Mostly because I kinda, I don't know, I went a little bold and decided to make my own Halloween costume one year. 
I decided that I wanted to look like Merida from Disney's Brave and I wanted to have a dress that looked just like Merida's. Mind you, I was already married by th then and so I didn't necessarily need to dress like a Disney character, I just kind of wanted to. Also, I had a calling in church where I worked with the children and so I thought that the children would really appreciate having a Disney character at our church's Halloween party. So I think at this point you probably have seen me sewn enough. So I'm gonna hope that the video gets sped up so that you don't have to watch me sew the entire time. We are nearly done. This is a, this is gonna be a beautiful card, but I will tell you this. Sewing does take time, so you have to make sure you have a good chunk of time set aside if you're going to make this card. So this die cut that we used on this card, it is a Lawn Fawn die. They also have a die cut similar to this. It says, thanks. You can find those dies on the Dies R Us website. In fact, my order for that just came in the other day. So that's how I know that that is still a current item on the website. So once we're done with the sewing of this, we are going to pop it up on our card base using foam tape. Then we will stamp a sentiment to go right next to this hello die. Then we'll be done. So let's get back to sewing. Also, I'd like to say that I think more people will probably have needle and thread in their home than may have different ink colors. So that's the other reason I decided to go with this kind of a card because I think that everybody should be should feel welcome to craft but I don't think you should feel that you necessarily need to purchase new materials to do it I mean a couple of new materials doesn't hurt every once in a while because I don't have the best penmanship when it comes to writing in cursive. I haven't written in cursive in forever. The only thing I can write in cursive is my name and my husband's name, but I'm fairly confident in saying that I could not make this pretty of a font for our sewing to go upon using my own handwriting. But if you do, I certainly applaud you. Oh my goodness, I wish I could do that, but I know I can't. So that's why I'm grateful for the die cut. Yeah, I didn't grow up sewing on a sewing machine. I grew up learning how to sew by hand. So sewing machine's still a little intimidating. So what I recommend doing this card. I would if you are looking for a way to like just clear your mind and get away I mean as much as possible at this point you know a lot of us might still be sequestered in our homes hopefully that will change someday does anyone else feel like it's been forever that we've been stuck in shelter in place I mean honestly We are nearly done. Woo! Yay! So what's left? We are going to stamp 
a little sentiment to go on a little piece of paper that's going to go right here, right about here, or it might go there. I haven't decided yet. I'm going to heat emboss it. And I think we're going to pick, let me see. I just decided that I wanted to stamp with these stamps. I love these cute little house mouse stamps. They're so adorable. There's the one I wanted to use. I want to use Thinking of You. I think it's kind of an appropriate card for right now. A lot of us can't see each other, so we might be, but we might be thinking of each other. So we are going to stamp this sentiment out and heat emboss it and then attach it to our card base. Well, our card at this point because our card front is on our card base and aside from sticking some white cardstock in here and then writing a message, our card is almost done. So we are going to grab our powder tool. I like that powder tool because you can actually refill it. I just never was one of those girls that liked a powder bag. I don't know why. Don't get me wrong, I started out with a powder bag when I started heat embossing, but I just never liked it. Because, well, the powder would get everywhere, and I'm like... I only need it in the places that I need it in. I don't need it to get everywhere. So we are going to use our microfiber cloth to help us make sure that we get this stamp nice and neat on our paper. Then we are going to bring in our coffee filters. I think that looks really cute. Now we just have to trim it up and stick it on our card. And then we will be done. That may not look so bad actually. So we'll just place that there. So now we're just going to bring in our small die cutting machine. This has this little lever to the side that you pull and it makes sure that your die cutting machine does not move while you are die cutting. That looks kind of cute. So, for this, because there's all this texture still from the embroidery floss, we are going to pop this up also. And as far as our black cardstock piece goes, yes, there is a little bit of an overage that makes it so it's not exactly straight, but we're actually going to stick that off to the side and we'll just trim that little bit off so no one would ever know. I love my little Spellbinders tool in one. It's, it is like the best tool. It also comes with so it comes with this piece and that piece, and it comes with a little piece that you can use as a spatula, and then you can buy some add-on pieces that will help you with scoring your card. So, okay, so you can pop this piece in and out, which is one of the things I really love about it, and then you can't budge it, and then you can, oh, see, there's a little spatula. So then you can just keep little pieces in there. And so if I needed to use the spatula, we just remove the spatula and insert it in like we did with the pokey. So we are going to, we are going to use our little T-square to help us ensure that this piece goes in there straight. Then we're gonna grab our scissors and trim that part off so no one would even know. There you go. That is our die cut and sewn 
and heat embossed card for the day. It was a lot of steps, but I think it was worth it. I think it looks super cute. And I think that whoever I send it to will really appreciate it. So if you want to get the die cut that I used, that is available on the Dies R Us website. If it's not, I will provide you a link. Well, I'm going to provide you the link for the Dies R Us website for where you can get this. Also, I'll provide you a link from Amazon if I can find one. But I would check Dies R Us first because a lot of times they have some really nice prices on die cuts and stamps and inks and things like that. I hope you all stay safe. Stay healthy, stay happy, and stay crafty. If you like what you saw, please click the like button. That lets others know that this is a good video to watch. If you would like to see future videos from me, please click the subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section, which is below the description box. All right, bye.